It wasn't something that I could have ever imagined that would have happened because Zach was so nice and... The woman in the film is Margaret Sanchez. She was being interviewed in a documentary called Zach and Addy and was close friends with the couple. In 2012, Sanchez would take part in a horrific crime that nearly mirrored that of her best friend, Addie, whose life was brutally taken by her boyfriend, Zach, in 2006. Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're a first time viewer, I'm happy you found me. Be sure to subscribe, like, comment, share, and click the notifications for new content. Again, welcome, and let's get into the story. To begin the story, I have made several trips to visit the apartment in New Orleans where in 2006, Zach Bowen murdered his girlfriend, Addie Hall, at 826 North Rampart Street, then desecrated her remains before taking his own life at the Omni Royal, a hotel in the French Quarter. I will put the end video links at the end if you wish to know the full stories and see the apartment where the crime happened, including the location where Zach took his own life. People have asked if I was ever going to cover the Margaret Sanchez case. I'm finally getting to it, but remember, the case is really about the victim, Jaren Lockhart, who lost her life for no rhyme or reason and way too soon, a case just as diabolical as the Zack and Addie story with an ironic twist of similar fate. In this next clip from a visit I made to New Orleans back in 2018, you will hear the medium and tour guide at the Rampart Street apartment explain the tragedies of both cases and how they were connected, and about how Margaret Sanchez, who was friends with Zach and Addie, would go on to commit a similar murder with her boyfriend, Terry Speaks, six years later in 2012. There are a few corrections that need to be made before I play the clip of the tour guide's explanation about the case of Margaret Sanchez. In the clip, she calls the victim Karen, but her name is Jaren, not Karen. Also, the guide refers to Terry Speaks as Margaret's husband, when in reality, he was only her boyfriend. The last correction is about their sentences and without trying to give too much away. She is basically right when she says Terry Speaks got life in prison, but she is way off about Margaret. The guide says she is only doing eight to 10 years in prison, but Sanchez received 40 years. But she does explain a few things that were said about this case around New Orleans at the time the crime happened and about the odd behavior Margaret displayed after losing her friends when Zach murdered Addie, then took his own life. And without further ado, here's that clip. Margaret Sanchez was a good friend of Addie's. They worked together at the bar. After the murder and it hit the news, Margaret paced up and down on that sidewalk every day, wondering, obsessed with how Zach did this to Addie. Also, we heard around town after that that she was actually in love with Zach. But she paced up and down, up and down, up and down, obsessed with this murder. Well, on the 10th anniversary of Katrina, Abe retreated to the closet again because this place was very active on the 10th anniversary. But also, there was um, a head and arms and legs washed up on the Gulf Shore. They pieced it together and found out that it was a woman named Karen Lockhart. Karen Lockhart was a stripper on Bourbon Street. And they backtracked her last days at the strip club she worked at. Coming out of the strip club, either side of her, when she left her shift, Margaret Sanchez and her husband. So they grabbed him, went to trial. The husband pled not guilty, he's doing life. Margaret pled guilty and claimed that he made her do it and all this. So she's doing eight to 10 years. So, yeah. Gentlemen's Club after 22 year old Jaron Lockhart, a dancer there, was slain last week. Her boyfriend last saw her Tuesday night. 
Two days later, her dismembered torso was found on the beach in Bay St. Louis. Her head and other body parts washed up over the weekend. Good evening. Another strange twist in the murder investigation of 23-year-old Jaron Lockhart. One of the suspects in her murder has now turned up on national television talking about an entirely different crime. North Shore reporter Heath Allen tells us that the similarities between the two are shocking. Investigators here in Hancock County were just a bit surprised when one of the key suspects and the murder investigation involving the death of Jaron Lockhart turned up on television the other night. We had knowledge that she was friends with a uh, somebody who had been killed in a similar fashion, but didn't realize I would be seeing it on uh, national TV. When 28-year-old Margaret Sanchez turned up in an episode of ABC's Final Witness, Hancock County investigators took notice. Sanchez talks about the murder of another French Quarter employee, bartender Eddie Hall back in October of 2006. She too had been dismembered. Sanchez and Addie Hall were friends. We don't anticipate anything that would help us solve our particular crime or you know prove that uh, Morgan Sanchez is any more complicit than we believe but it may, it may give us an opportunity to know her a little bit better. But Hancock County investigators do want to see all of the Sanchez interview and question those who did that interview as well. I'm not hoping to find um, the golden egg in all this. Uh, I, I realize that that's, you know, not feasible. It may give us an opportunity to know her a little bit better. It may give us an opportunity to discover something that we may be able, another road that we may be able to go down. That interview with Sanchez took place about 15 months ago, long before the murder of Jaron Lockhart. But the similarities between the two crimes are striking. And this is very interesting because both the victims in this case were beheaded. We're getting now on the North Shore with Bureau Chief Heath Allen. He is live in Tangeboro Parish where the female being questioned just wrapped up a hearing in front of a judge. Point, uh, in a mid-morning press conference, Kenner Police Chief Steve Carraway announced his department is now taking the lead in the investigation into the murder of Jaron Lockhart. The 22-year-old was last seen on surveillance video leaving a Bourbon Street men's club where she worked in June 2012. Just days later, Lockhart's remains were found on a beach in Hancock County, Mississippi. Investigators there later identified 40-year-old Terry Speaks and 28-year-old Margaret Sanchez as suspects in Lockhart's murder. According to Carraway, the two were with Lockhart on the last night she was seen alive in New Orleans, and police searched their Kenner home for evidence, but to this day, Neither have been charged. We're searching the last known address of that couple. This is a live look at that house in Kenner, and you can see there are plenty of police officers on the scene checking things, going over what's on the property right now. We have a crew there. Then there is additional evidence turned over to the FBI after the forensic search of the suspects. Of New Orleans dancer Jaron Lockhart has been released from jail. Hancock County authorities appear ready to move against both even if it is with something less than a murder charge. Hancock County authorities feel they know who committed this heinous crime. Now it's just a matter of bringing them to justice. Although it took two years to get convictions after Jaron Lockhart's death, Margaret Sanchez, nor her boyfriend at the time, Terry Speaks, escaped prosecution. Both have been in prison since 2014 for causing the death and mutilation of Jaron Lockhart in 2012. The motive for this murder was simply a thrill kill. They roamed around Bourbon Street in search of any random dancer from any nightclub that would be willing to go home with them by using the excuse to perform for a bachelor's party in exchange for $700. Believing they would be easy prey, several dancers turned them down because the couple creeped them out. Sadly, Lockhart made the fateful mistake to trust them and took the dangerous pair up on their offer. She was a struggling young mother of a three-year-old daughter and felt the extra cash would come in handy. When the pair got Lockhart back to their home, one pinned her down while the other stabbed her in the chest, a lethal puncture wound to her heart. After she died, they dismembered her body and drove to the Mississippi Gulf Coast and threw the body parts into the water, which washed up a few days later on the shoreline. In order to make it hard for the police to identify her, they even cut the tattoos off of her body. When news from Mississippi made it back to New Orleans about the dismembered, unidentified body of a woman who was found on the shores of the Gulf Coast, the police in New Orleans connected the dots and believed it was a possibility that it was the missing Bourbon Street dancer who had been reported missing by her family after she didn't return home from work a few nights before. DNA tests were conducted 
and confirmed that the remains were indeed that of Jaron Lockhart. After police viewed the surveillance footage from the nightclub Lockhart worked at, they were able to see who she left with on the last night she was known to have worked or was seen alive, and the footage showed her leaving with two people, one female and one male. The police released the footage to the public and soon found out who the couple was that Lockhart left with and identified Margaret Sanchez and Terry Speaks. However, they were unable to make an arrest at first due to the lack of hard evidence. But Sanchez and Speaks were prime suspects from the get-go. The reason it took so long to arrest them for her murder was because there was no DNA found on the body parts and the crime scene, the house the couple lived in, was searched but no evidence was found to warrant an arrest but that the smell of bleach permeated through the home. Even a neighbor commented on being able to smell the bleach from his house across the street. It's interesting that you mention this because there was not one shred of evidence found in the home. It was completely wiped clean. Yeah, you could smell the bleach from over there from to here. The police were also able to track the car the two had driven to transport the remains of their victim and knew the car was in Mississippi at the same time that the body was dumped because less than 24 hours after Lockhart left work, a license plate recognition camera on Interstate 10 in Slidell, which is right outside of New Orleans, picked up Sanchez's 2001 Chevy Lumina heading east. About 11 and a half hours later, another license plate recognition camera on I-10 going westbound at the Louisiana rest stop near the Mississippi state line recorded the car re-entering the state. When the story broke, they both ended up getting arrested, but for unrelated charges. The police found out that Margaret Sanchez's boyfriend, Terry Speaks, had moved to Louisiana and was living as an unregistered sex offender for crimes he committed in New York, and that she was knowingly harboring him. Still sporting a full head of blue hair, Margaret Sanchez climbed into a tangible parish jail van headed back to court. The issue today, did she know 39-year-old Terry Speaks was a sex offender? The detective testified that he didn't have any information to provide to the court that she actually knew that uh, Terry Speaks was a uh, sex offender. After a short proceeding this afternoon, District Judge Brenda Ricks ruled probable cause for the arrest warrant. Sanchez attorneys say it was the only decision she could make. It goes beyond this, and you know, it goes beyond this charge. No one wants to say, uh, well, we, we did the right thing and we uh, followed the law and we let her go. And then something happened. Leaving the courthouse, a man identifying himself as Sanchez's father told me, off camera, his daughter thought she'd met the man of her dreams, and now she is living a nightmare. Margaret Sanchez has not yet been officially charged by the Tangible Parish District Attorney's Office with harboring a sex offender. She was able to convince the court system that she was unaware that Speaks was a sex offender, and the charges were dropped, allowing Margaret Sanchez to be released from jail. But in reality, they had bigger fish to fry with her anyways. Terry Speaks was sent back to a New York state prison for failing to register as a sex offender when he moved to Louisiana. Both Sanchez and Speaks were questioned about the murder while detained and both denied any involvement. What eventually got them caught was the prison email system. The two were fighting and corresponding with one another through the very telling emails. When enough evidence was gathered to obtain an arrest warrant for the two, Terry Speaks waived extradition and was brought back to Louisiana, where both he and Margaret Sanchez were arrested and charged with the second degree murder of Jaron Lockhart. At first, both pled not guilty. Terry Speaks, it charges Speaks with second degree murder and obstruction of justice. Speaks remains behind bars in New York on unrelated sex offender charges. Margaret Sanchez, Speaks' then-girlfriend, was arrested in May and charged in the murder of Lockhart. Out of Jefferson Parish, a grand jury has indicted two people, a man and a woman, charging them with the murder of a young mother two years ago. Terry Speaks and Margaret Sanchez have long been suspected of killing 22-year-old Jaron Lockhart, dismembering her remains and disposing of them in the Gulf of Mexico. Speaks is a convicted sex offender who has been in custody during most of the investigation on unrelated counts. He was set for release in October, but the indictments will quash that action. Sanchez was arrested earlier this year in connection with the case. She and Speaks now face a charge of second-degree murder and various lesser counts, including obstruction of justice. I know it's easy to question how this wasn't a first-degree murder case, as it should have been. And because I am not an attorney, I will try my best and explain. But there are times when a prosecutor may not believe that they have a strong enough case with hard direct evidence to secure a conviction, 
even with the person involved pleading guilty and spilling the details like Margaret eventually did. The stakes become too high to gamble with the justice for a victim in a death penalty case and that a guilty person or persons could walk free with no justice being served. However, their chances of getting a second degree conviction, which carries the maximum penalty of life in prison where capital punishment is removed from the table, can often sway a juror's conscience in finding a person guilty when the circumstances seem highly likely of that person's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. That way, if a juror even believes they made a mistake, then at least the wrongfully convicted person has a chance for a new trial and acquittal. Before the trials began, Margaret Sanchez ended up changing her plea. In exchange for confessing the entire story of how she helped Terry Speaks murder Jaron Lockhart, she pled guilty to manslaughter and obstruction of justice, receiving a deal of 40 years in prison. Sanchez is serving out her sentence in the Jefferson Parish Correctional Center in Gretna. Terry Speaks was found guilty and is serving 100 years in Louisiana State Prison in Angola. Because the couple cleaned up the crime scene so well, even the car they transported her body parts in, not a trace of DNA connected them to this crime. This was purely a circumstantial case. It was the emails and the circumstances of Lockhart's death that tied them to her, like the surveillance footage and the license plate recognition along with the fact Margaret Sanchez, who couldn't stand the idea of spending the rest of her life in prison, her confession to the police, that ultimately brought justice to the Lockhart family. If this case seems like a raw deal, it's because it is. Both defendants are behind bars, but not forever, not Sanchez. At least Jaron Lockhart's killers aren't living scot-free, and her family did accept the plea deal. It's been nearly 11 years since Jaron's life was taken and her daughter, only three at the time of her death, robbed of her mother by these two evil people. You tell me you have nightmares. Yeah, how she died. I dream about her getting cut up and everything. With Hancock County, Mississippi investigators now poised to present their initial case to the DA's office, the family of 23-year-old Jaron Lockhart still mourns. It has been a nightmare for Donna Lockhart, a nightmare that continues. Not a day goes by that you don't think. No, not a day. Think about her all the time. She was a good person, and she trusted everybody. Maybe too much. Yeah, and uh, sentenced to life in jail. I don't want nobody to take their life because it ain't right. All I can say to conclude this video is as much as I want to believe Margaret Sanchez and Terry Speaks are suffering terribly in prison, I know it can't compare to the pain that Jaron's family lives with each day without her in their lives, and my heart goes out to them. She and I actually share the same birthday, just different years. For new content and breaking news stories, please be sure to click the notifications to follow along and be notified when updates are available. Don't forget to like, comment, and please feel free to share. You can also join my Facebook group for True Crime and History Time and follow me on TikTok and Instagram. My usernames for those platforms are at Jerry Scarborough Official. And as always, thank you for watching, subscribing, and supporting my channel.